Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 12 of the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast. My name is Lisa, and I'm coming to you from Long Island, New York. It is freezing here today. Oh, my goodness. We're just going to get right into it and talk about cozy knitting things because that's the kind of weather we're having right now. It is frigid out there, but it's the perfect weather for me to wear my not two day sweater. You guys, I did it. It's finished. It is off the needles. I seriously never thought that day was gonna come. And I knew it had to come, but I never really quite thought it was gonna happen for a while there. So, oh my goodness. Before we talk about it, I am drinking some tea because it's freezing. Um, yeah. This is really yummy. It's a chocolate orange tea and it is from Clipper Ship, which is a local to me tea shop on Huntington, Long Island, and it's the town that both my husband and I work in. Luckily, he gets to go to work and he gets to go pick up some yummy tea for me, yay, while I stay and work from home over Zoom. Boo, don't love it. But we do what we have to do, so at least I do get some yummy tea out of it. So it is the perfect tea weather. Like this is so warm and so lovely and it's just, it's very cozy. So speaking of cozy, all right, let me show you my sweater. I don't know how I'm gonna show you guys everything on camera because it's very long. <laughs> this is a very long sweater. Um, okay, so. This was a test knit that I did for Katherine Clark of Brooklyn General. And this, this was intense. This was officially intense um, for so many reasons. This, um, the pattern is a pretty intense pattern. You can see it is color work galore. And it like keeps going like forever, even like the sleeves and on the back. I mean, it's, it is color work everywhere. Three colors. Those of you who have been with me, thank you, by the way, for coming back. Um, yeah, and for everybody who's new, welcome to my space on YouTube. Um, yeah, so a lot of you will know about this sweater and the biggest reason that it was so intense, the biggest two reasons are the three week delay in the postal service delivering my yarn in the month of December when things were like crazy backed up before the holidays. I totally forgive them for that, but man, that made, that made life pretty crazy. So let's see, I cast this on, I was, I was checking my Ravelry page when I was updating everything and I cast this on, on December 27th and I cast it off on January 27th. One month. This was a big project for just one month. And the other thing that made this intense was all the three color color work. So yeah, so basically every single moth on here, all of those rounds that had the moths was just pretty crazy. Um, slow. Very slow. Um, normally I can do a sweater pretty easily in a month. This one was a big push. There were so many, um, there were so many nights, you guys, that I stayed up till three, four, five, working on it. I think I finished this at five in the morning on Thursday, the day that Catherine released the pattern. But I finished, I totally came through as a test knitter. Oh my goodness, I did it. So, let me talk to you guys about it a little bit. Um, I, I think it's a really, it's a really challenging and interesting pattern. And if you like challenging, then you guys should try this. If you like challenging and if you like color work, um, if you've never done three color work, I still don't have it totally figured out. I got better at it, but yeah, I'm going to just have to do more of it to, to get used to it. A bit more but um 
you do get a break from the three color work and just get to do a lot of two color strands and color work as well. So there's plenty of opportunity for that. Um, not so much just plain stockinette, but there, there are several moments of that as well. They just don't last for nearly as long. But luckily most of those moments happen after the whole body when you're just kind of like, oh my God, I can't take three color color knitting anymore. And then you're done. Like if you can get through the fourth section of moths, actually her chart actually goes through five moths. So she gives you the option of lengthening your sweater by stopping at different points of the chart. So I did through four moths because that's what her sample was. So I kind of thought that that was the minimum length she wanted. But I mean, you know, let me stand up again. I'm going to, I'm going to insert pictures so that you guys can actually really appreciate the whole sweater. Cause I can't, I can't really show you here. Um, but I was debating, um, I was debating like just stopping the sweater after three moths and then you could skip like this whole part right with that two strand of color work and the moths and you could s then go on to the ribbing or do like a little color work in the ribbing and it would still like my my waistband is here like it would still be at least on me this would still be a decent length sweater not even cropped right um actually like maybe yeah so I mean like you could you could totally shorten this sweater um I didn't because I was doing it as a test knit but um there was one point before I haven't blocked this yet so it's not like it's still kind of rough looking right now because there's a lot of things that need to be evened out. Um, it was a little bit hugging my hips at first until I kind of tugged and pulled in a few places at the float. So I was a little bit worried that after getting through all of that, I would want to actually rip it back and just have it shorter. Just because since having a baby, my, my hips kind of are curvier than they used to be, as I'm sure many of you can relate to. Um, but when I got it all done and kind of, you know, tugged in, in a few places on the floats to just even out some of my tension, cause I was trying to get it as even as I could, because I know that Catherine wanted us to post pictures of it for release day. Um, and I, I didn't have time to block it. And at five in the morning, I didn't want to steam block it and I was teaching the whole day. So yeah, so I, I just, I couldn't. Um, but if it was still gonna hug my hips as much as it was, then it was gonna be sitting a little bit funny. So I was, I was actually thinking that maybe I'm gonna have to rip back and just shorten the sweater and like rip out that whole fourth section of moths, but I actually like it. It's it's not exactly a sweater dress. It's more of kind of like a tunic length on me. Now, I saw like other people that knit the same size as I am, but they're built differently than I am. I have a very short torso and all of my height, I'm a short person, I'm like 5'4", but most of that height is in my legs. So the, the upper part of me is pretty squat and I've seen it the same size on other people and it doesn't come down past their butts at all. So yeah, I mean the length, I guess, I guess you gotta kind of take into consideration like your body shape and just where you think it's gonna fit on you, where it's gonna hit. At first I was like, oh my gosh, is this thing gonna be down to my knees because I don't want it quite that long, but it's not that long. and. It's actually super, super cozy, and I don't wanna rip it back anymore. I actually really am enjoying having a sweater that's a little bit longer than this, um, than my usual sweaters. Um, yeah, for weather like this, it's it's super cozy. It's, it's just so warm. There's room, like I'm wearing a long sleeve thermal shirt under this today, because that's how cold it is. Usually if I wear anything under a sweater, it's just a t-shirt because I'll get too hot. But it's like, 
it's in the teens out there and the wind oh my god the wind today was crazy I did have to go outside just for a little bit but yeah it, it, it was it's, it's cold <laughs> it's apparently just gonna get colder this weekend so I I might wait a few days to block this until the worst of the cold windy weather is over because um, it's just super snuggly so yeah so I didn't block it so that part didn't get done and then there's only there's one other part that I didn't do yet and I don't know if I'm going to you guys can let me know what you think so um all right let me show you I'm gonna kind of hike this up here a little bit so the way that she wrote the pattern is like it's supposed to end here so this is supposed to be the hem it's supposed to look like this after she knit her sample she ended up um not liking because of the way that the ribbing is with the color the second color the contrasting color in the purled stitches there um it was i guess flaring out and curling a little bit and she didn't like that so she wrote um an extra like unit then like a, a round of pearls so that then and then you can do the same amount of inches of stuck in that stitch and then what you're supposed to do is whip stitch it down to the back, right? So it's actually supposed to, I can't, can't really show you guys even, yeah, even like kneeling on my chair, the sweater's too long, but you get the idea. So that's supposed to be the bottom, similar to the sleeves, just like that. Um, and so I was waiting to do that because the other thing that um, she has in the pattern, and I'm going to insert a picture of it here since I can't show you, is she has a message that she wrote in duplicate stitch on like the back part of her hem. I don't remember exactly what it says. So I wasn't sure if that was something that I was going to want to do. And you kind of have to do that before you whip stitch the hem. So... I was like, all right, I'm not going to have time to do that. And then it was like 5 a.m. and I, I was done because I had to work all of that day. I had to teach. So I needed to get a couple of hours of sleep. Otherwise, my students were, yeah, I wasn't going to be coherent. Um, so I left it. And because stock and neck curls, I'm getting this really cool like jelly roll hem. And so I'll just stand up again and show you. So you see... And you'll see in the pictures too. So it's, it's curling up like that. And I, I actually like it. So I don't think that I want to duplicate stitch a message. I was debating, not so much because I wanted to have a message inside my sweater, but um, because it was just something that I haven't done before. So that I thought, well, maybe it's another skill that I can add to my bucket of skills. And... Yeah, so I, I'm a little bit still undecided, but I, you guys let me know what you think about this little jelly roll action going on at the hem. I think it looks pretty cute. I don't think it looks bad, so I'm tempted to just block my sweater and even out the color work and stuff and then just have it be done. So yeah, I have a few ends that I need to weave in inside the sweater but I wanted to wait until after blocking it for that too because I might want to kind of pull and tug at a few sections to get like some of the colors to just pop a little bit a little bit more because some of them are not really showing up as well as I would like behind my stitches um, of the the darker brown stitches they're kind of getting hidden so I don't know it was three color knitting probably what happened is I should have been holding the yarn in a different place so that the color would pop more. I can't even, like, I feel like this whole month of knitting this sweater was a blur. Can't even remember, like, what direction it was in. I think I mostly had the colored yarn, like, all the way to the right. So maybe for those sections, I should have reversed it and had the colored yarn to the left of the brown. And then maybe it would have popped a bit more. I think I don't know there's this whole like debate on color dominance I know that like a lot of people are kind of of the school that 
believes in color dominance and that the way you hold the yarn has to be consistent the whole time otherwise the color work is gonna hide um be hidden like kind of what's happening with mine in a little bit of the places um but then i know there's other people that that don't believe in it like i'm pretty sure arne and carlos think that it's just a tension issue and that if you have really good and consistent tension then it doesn't matter which color you hold where i think so so i don't know I've never really had it be this much of an issue before and I don't think that I've ever had super consistency with where I've been holding my yarn. So I don't know. I guess the only other thing that I have to say about this sweater is to talk about the sleeves. So the sleeves were actually knit flat because the whole like backside of the sleeve is just plain stockinette with no color work. So that would just be a lot to, to carry floats all the way around. So I think that that's why she, she had them knit flat. Um, and I was really worried that it was gonna be a big pain on the pearl side rows with the color work. But the, the chart at that point was like just one section, <laughs> like you can see. It's, it's just like one thing, one chart. It doesn't repeat all the way around. So actually it was like, you know, the two sides of the sleeves were just plain stockinette and then it was just the center stitches that had the color work. So it actually wasn't that bad and it didn't take that long. So yeah, I don't know what else to say about this sweater, but if you guys are interested in purchasing the same yarn that Catherine used for her sample. She does have kits available um, through Brooklyn General, which is her store. I think that they're all sold out, but she is going to be putting pre-orders together for more kits. So you guys can go check that out if you're interested. Um, my color work is the same colors that, that she used. It was, um, I've got it right here so you guys can see. I've got this one anyway. So the brown is the tuku wool fingering, and this is the color ray. And then, um, no, I don't have the spin cycle over here, but the spin cycle, you guys can basically use any color spin cycle. Um, the Noctuide colorway, I believe you can only get through Brooklyn General. I'm not really sure. I don't think that spin cycle... I don't know if the Spin Cycle website is also selling the Noctua Day or if that is an exclusive to Brooklyn General colorway. So you guys will have to kind of um, check that out. Um, but everybody who has been using like any colors of Spin Cycle, like it looks great. So you just need a skein of Spin Cycle. I think I used half a skein. And then this is the other yarn that I used and this is from Barrett Wilco, and this is the color Oats, and this is her Wisconsin Woolen Fingering. So that's what I used for mine. I think that this is pretty similar to, in color anyway, to um, the Sky Dance that she used for her base in her store, which is um, her local to her farms, sheep. Sheep from local to New York, yeah, so. Okay, so that takes care of my what am I wearing and my finished object sections because this is all I've been doing for a month. That's pretty much it. And definitely this is the only sweater that I worked on all week long. So I guess we're going to move on to works in progress. Okay, so for my works in progress this week, I actually was able to make some pretty good progress on my worsted boxy. So that's the only one I have for you. I did not actually get that much done on my Vanilla is the New Black sock. So minimal, it's not going to look any different. Um, and I'm pretty sure that I showed that to you guys in the last two episodes. So we're just going to skip over that one today. Um, but my worsted boxy... I have gotten it to the point where I split 
for the front and back for the sleeves. Um, so I did my 17 inches of stockinette <laughs> during all of my Zoom meetings, basically. Um, yeah, so this is made out of, I'll show you this first so that then I can put this down. Um, so I'm knitting this with the Malabrigo Rios, which is the recommended yarn that Hohi Locatelli used for this pattern. So I'm using the color Va, and it's not a kind of color that I normally gravitate to, but it's really lovely. And I think it's really great for the colder, really great color for the colder months, like the late fall and winter months. This color is just really speaking to me right now. Um, so that's what I'm using. And I'm going to just stand up. I've only actually knit maybe six, six rows back and forth on the front. So if this is where you split for the sleeves, again, I've got like, so there's my armpits there. So it's, it's going to be maybe about there. And it's curling up a little bit at the hem right now. But this actually shows you pretty well what this colorway looks like, I think, too. Um, it's probably going to blow out the camera a little bit, but you can see there's greens and blues. And it almost looks kind of stripey. And that's because I am, I am alternating skeins. I was alternating every single time I went around in a circle. And now, every time I do... Um, so now we're in back and forth stuck in that knit flat for the front section here and so now i have to change every other row so i have to knit and then purl back and then i can swap out for my other skein of yarn so that's where this is at so um i'm pretty excited it's still gonna be really good um zoom knitting because it's still really really simple just stuck in that stitch this has been like the perfect sweater to be working on as my other project <laughs> to complement this craziness that was going on here um yeah so if you guys want like something really mindless to cast on and you haven't already knit the worsted boxy all right she's got a lightweight boxy too out of fingering weight yarn so i'm sure that that's basically the same pattern but just a little bit different but you get the idea like just lots of lots of mindless easy you can just space out pretty much and just go to another place while you're knitting on it or be really focused on something else while you're knitting on it which is how I do my mindless knitting because I'm hardly mindless when I'm on zoom I am actually really needing to pay attention and I'm always really worried that people are gonna like if they find out that I'm on I'm on, like knitting while I'm on zoom that they're gonna be like oh, she's just knitting she's not doing what she's supposed to be doing but the knitting really really helps me stay focused and it really helps me stay awake just to be like I'm a fidgety person so I have a really hard time like when I when I teach in person I'm I'm able to like walk around the room and and get right up to examine like what they're doing and and I, I'm demonstrating a lot and I, I do a lot with like with body movement and everything while I'm teaching in person but when I'm when I'm here trying to teach and stuff over over zoom I am I'm sitting in a chair for like hours and that's really exhausting because like you have to you have to stay so so focused and if I were just sitting here just like this, you know, just like chiming in, like it, it's been really exhausting. I actually am now have a, a break worked into my schedule that I didn't need to take when I was doing in-person teaching because it's just, it's so much more exhausting just staring at a screen. Anyway, so this has been really great for that because I can, I can do it without looking at it. It's just knitting. All the way around well now it'll be knitting and purling but that's fine too so yes I recommend the boxy worsted or fingering weight for a zoom knitting project it's really really great um, 
So that's really, I didn't get a whole lot done on this, but just little by little, little by little, it has gotten 17 inches on it. And I just split for the sleeves, for the front and back actually, like the, yeah, the armhole split. So now it has to be, yeah, knit flat for the front, knit flat for the back, and then whatever for the sleeves. So it's, it's exciting to be at a new point in this sweater. So that's all I have to say about that one. Um, okay, yeah, I've got, I've got no other works in progress, but I am so anxious to cast on all the things now that this sweater is done. So I wanted to talk about, um, about upcoming cast ons for a minute. Um, yeah, so have a sip of my tea before it gets super cold. So there are so many things that I want to cast on. Like I have been waiting basically all month to be able to cast on something new. Um, and now that this sweater is to the point where it just needs to be blocked, I can finally do that. Um, I can't get too crazy because I do have two more test knits that I will be doing for Annie over at Boho Chic Fiber Co. I do a lot of test knitting for her. I haven't done one for her in over a year, so now I'm kind of doing two and I am I'm trying to shop my stash right now for these test knits. Um, one is a short sleeve worsted weight sweater, and the other is a very bulky sweater. I want to shop my stash, but I'm having like a really difficult time finding the materials that I need because I don't buy worsted or bulky weight yarn. So... I'm hoping that one of those two sweaters, which probably is going to be the worsted weight one, will be one that I can knit from my stash. And I just, I have a feeling that with, with the gauge that she's getting, that she's asking for, for her bulky sweater, I don't think that even my chunky yarns, I don't think are as chunky as, as I need for that sweater. So there might have to be some shopping to make that happen. And I have like, basically both of those need to be done within the next month. So those are gonna be two things that get cast on and I'm not gonna be able to show them here, but I'll, once I pick my yarn and everything, I will, I'll show you guys a little bit. I just can't give away those designs at all. Um, but I do have something else that I'm really anxious to cast on right away. And I'm gonna join my knit from your stash thread that I started that I have not participated in yet. Um, okay, so I was just talking about the Worsted Boxy, which is a Hohi Locatelli pattern. And this next cast on that I wanna do is also um, a very newly released pattern by Hohi Locatelli, and it is the hipster lightweight, or the lightweight hipster. She has had a hipster shawl that I have also been planning to knit, but it's in like a worsted weight and I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, but she just came out a couple of weeks ago with a lightweight version of the hipster shawl and she used Magpie Fibers Swanky Sock for hers. Just one skein, it's a one skein project. And I was so excited once I found out that that was what she used for hers because I have one skein, ah, and it's not like the light, there we go, of Magpie, I don't know, the ring light that I have on me is making it really hard to actually see the label, but label's not so important. So I got this skein from one of my fiber share partners in our fiber share swap a couple of years ago, maybe like two years ago now, and I've just had it in my stash because I just didn't know what I wanted to make with it. And so look how pretty this is. I think that um, this is a Fiber Society, it's Fiber Society number five is the color. 
So she has a fiber society that she does. I think her name is Danny or Danny, Danny maybe. Um, she has a fiber society, just so pretty these colors. And I don't think that this color, I think that was my cat. <laughs> I don't think that this color was something that um, my fiber share partner loved, but she knew it was my colors because of all the purple in it. So yeah, so this is in my stash and I'm going to make a lightweight, a hipster, what is it, a lightweight hipster? I think that's what it's called, the lightweight hipster. So I'm going to cast that on this week. I am going to wind this up after I podcast tonight and this is going to get cast on. I don't knit shawls. I've got one, one shawl, the Golden Hour Shawl by Andrea Mowry that I have knit. And so I just, I've been kind of thinking I want to make more shawls because I just do a lot of sweaters and a lot of socks. So I just want a little bit more variety. So this is something that is from my stash. So it's going to totally count for my stop, drop, and knit your stash thread in my Ravelry group. If you guys want to join in, it's the uh, stop, drop, and knit podcast group on Ravelry. And I have a thread for knitting from your stash. So this is going to be my first contribution to that thread, along with hopefully one of my two test knits this month too. So I'm hoping that one of those worsted weight one, I'm really hoping I can make that happen for my stash as well. So, all right. I have, let's see, I've got acquisitions. I've got spinning today to talk about, and I have a little bit of knit worthy to talk about. So what should I do? Let me start with, um, let me start with knit worthy. Okay. So knit worthy. So a couple of years ago when Owen was in preschool, I knit him the most adorable bear hat and mittens. Gonna insert some pictures so that you guys can see the cuteness. And he asked for it. He had seen another little kid wearing a bear hat and he said, I want a bear hat. And so I made him a bear hat because when a kid says he wants a bear hat and you say, well, I can make you that. And then he wants it like five minutes later. <laughs> so I knit him this most adorable hat. I will link up the pattern. I don't remember the name of the pattern offhand, but I wanna talk about this hat. I'm gonna put this on because this thing fits me too. And so, I mean, you guys, look at how cute this is. And then of course I knit him some mitten. These fit me too. I can just wear his stuff. I'm gonna just steal this from him. So, this is just so cute, right? So I'm just gonna hang out in this for a little bit here because it's like the cutest thing and I just love it. And oh my gosh. So <laughs> Owen was in preschool. So this was two years ago that I made him this hat and he loved it, okay? He wore this a lot. Well, this is like his warmest hat and mittens. And I will tell you what it's made out of. I don't even want to take the mittens off because I'm just having fun being a bear right now. So, all right, what I did was I held together this yarn here. I'll take my mitten off so I can really hold it up, but I'll take the other one off too. So this yarn here, is like a thick, it's like a thick and thin yarn. You can see that it looks hand spun. It is by Plymouth Yarn and it's called Deep Brown Shadow and it is Merino Textura. So it is 62% superwash fine merino wool and 38% merino wool. So I um, I held this together with brown wool. I want to say it was like Patton's Classica, like just like a, a regular brown wool. And I'll hold it up so you guys can see the, the texture that it gave. So it's so cute. 
and so it's like got all these specks in it there we go so cute and then what I did was <laughs> I just love this um, for the light brown I used Barocco vintage so this is like a acrylic wool blend I want to say it's like maybe 70% acrylic maybe I'm wrong about that I don't have the bands for this anymore I mean I do but it just has a number on it and it's mixed in with a bunch of other bands so I have no idea it's just like a tan color so that was what I used for the nose and the ears and then the the black here this is just some acrylic that I had in my stash and then I made the little so you stuff you stuff the nose so the nose is all squishy it's super squishy and then um, these are some eyeballs that you can sew on and these just came from that um, button stash that I got from when my grandma passed away and we just got a bunch of her craft supplies so yeah so all right put the yarn down for a second I'm gonna drink my tea my home repairman's so all right maybe I don't want to do this there we go ah oh, that's nice this is cozy guys I love it so much when he wears this because <laughs> looking down on him from above right because he's short you see like it just looks like there's a little bear running around the yard we went to a Long Island yarn and farm one day to pick up some yarn from Miss Tabitha over there and I have some really cute pictures of the llamas meeting the bear so I mean this is the cutest thing right I mean it's cute on me it is so cute on him he just looks like this little bear running around okay so why am I bringing this up today oh yeah and then like you just braid like the ends of the ear flaps and so cute so I'm bringing this up today because we dug this out yesterday because yesterday Owen had theater and his theater is in the evening early evening after school and it was very very cold it hasn't been nearly as cold as it just got yesterday so his other hats that I have made for him are just they're cute but they're not like really really warm and this hat is just it's thick because I held it double the two yarns together so there's like a lot of cushy wool in it and it's got the ear flaps this is just by far his warmest hat and his warmest mittens so warm so I said you know I said you want to wear these and he's like oh yeah I'll wear the bear I'll wear the bear I'll do that instead of the other one well he was good with it until we got to theater and then he did not want to wear it to walk from the car to his theater because he was really really worried that the kids were gonna make fun of him that he's like everybody's gonna make fun of me they're gonna laugh at me I was like they're not gonna laugh at you it's freezing it's a really cute hat you look cute I said people smile at you all the time when when you wear this because you're adorable not because they think you look ridiculous so of course nobody laughed at him but I felt so bad because he was so self-conscious wearing this that he hid behind me I made him wear it just because of how cold it was I made him wear it I said well, as soon as we get to the theater you, you go inside and you can take it off right so he was hiding behind me like I could see people just like smiling from like inside their cars because there's we there's like a Walgreens right there too so some people sit in their cars while they wait for whoever to go shop so there was a lady sitting in her car and she was smiling at it when he was like not wanting her to look at him and so he like he would just hide behind me the whole time and he was but then he saw like a mom of one of the theater kids with the other siblings and he's like oh they didn't laugh at me I said no they're not gonna laugh at you but so it just it makes me really sad that now that he is in elementary school because this didn't happen when he was at his pre-k kindergarten school he wore this just fine now 
he rides the bus with older kids. So, you know, his elementary school goes up to fifth grade. And there's a second grader up the street who's kind of a little punk. Not like this kid's biggest fan. His mom actually drives the school bus, so it is what it is. But, he, you know, not like the sweetest kid. So just, I, I think it's not the first time that he has come home and said that he's like afraid to wear something to school or like in front of kids that go to his school. He's, he's suddenly become very self-conscious and very concerned with whether his kids are going to laugh at him or not. So he wouldn't wear this. Like he did, but he didn't. Like he wouldn't wear it in public. And that makes me really sad because it's so cute. So I don't know. I might have to steal it back for me. So he is still knit worthy, but you know, I just, I think that this is adorable. But I mean, he did wear it in preschool. He's only six. I think it's still cute. I would totally wear this. I would wear this out in public. And I would not be concerned about anybody laughing at me. This thing is warm and it's cute and it makes me happy. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, is he just entering that age now where I'm going to have to make him things that even if he likes them, that I'm going to have to make sure that they're like school approved too? I don't know. He wears his sweaters with no problems. I do try to make sure that I don't need him anything like dorky. But I mean, is this hat just too dorky for a six year old to wear to school or theater? What do you guys think? It kind of broke my heart a little bit. Not gonna lie about that. So this might become mine. And then he'll probably be jealous that I'm wearing it and then maybe he'll wear it again. He wore that Christmas tree hat, no problems. He wasn't worried about people making fun of him in that. So I don't know. I think it's really cute. So I think I'm going to have to knit him another hat that he will wear. So I have one. Um, that's where I'm going with this too. I have a pattern picked out that he thinks is pretty cool. It's by Sari Norland and she is a Finnish designer and I have fallen in love with her through her podcast and her designs are totally, completely my style. Um, but I'm gonna pop up a picture of this little dinosaur hat that I want to make for Owen. And that's gonna be something that I cast on for him pretty soon. And try to make it a little bit warmer. It's color work, so it should automatically be a little bit warmer than the other ones that he has. So we'll see. All right, so mittens are off. I'm gonna say goodbye for the bear here. And now we're gonna move on. To... All right, so you guys, I'm rejoining all of my threads. <laughs> finally, now that this sweater is done, I am finally ready to get back on this 100 days of spinning thing that I started and only did one day of. I am proud to say that I spent an hour last night plying my yarn totally wrong <laughs> whoops <laughs> it has been so long all right so let me show you first let me remind you um the singles that i had i and it wasn't looking right so but all right i have been working on this yarn for like a full year it is so pretty this is a blue faced luster a bfl fiber that i got from frad frab just fibers at some point on some vacation. I don't remember where, um, but it's gorgeous. It's, I love the color. It's, it's mostly blue and purple with like a little bit of that like favorite magenta kind of color that I love. So these are still singles. These I have not applied yet. And this is um, like what the fiber looked like. I, no, not that one, this one. I had just like a little part of it that I found. So that's what it looked like. And, all right, so, <sighs> you guys, I'm gonna have to redo this whole thing. I was like, this does not look good. What did I do wrong? You guys, it took me 
I mean, I said it took me, I was so on and off spinning that fiber that I couldn't remember what direction I spun the singles in. So I did it on two different drop spindles. I had like part of it I had done on this one. The other part I had done on this one because Owen was like wanting to twirl it. So I never knew, I never knew like what direction I was going. You're always supposed to spin your singles in the same direction. So I just, I couldn't remember. And I'm sure that like you can look at your yarn and figure it out, but I don't know. So I'm gonna show you guys what I did. This is totally wrong. So I have, I have, this one is a little bit. So this is plied, except it's not. So do you, you guys see, I was like, why does this not look right? Basically, all that I did in the plying process was completely overspin my singles to the point where they're not even plied together anymore. Like they're just gonna keep falling apart. Like you can see, it's like I, I tried to make a yarn. It, it's just, yeah, it didn't work. Um, I totally went the wrong direction in the plying process. And so I've been fixing it little by little. I have been fixing it, but let me tell you that in, in the fixing the plying progress process, I, I came across some of my singles, like I spaced out, like picking it up and putting it down. I spun the singles on the, like I spun those in different directions in, in a few places. <laughs> like I was, I was inconsistent. I am a total newbie spinner. This is only my second attempt at making yarn. So, okay, so this is one that I fixed. And so like you can see like it's a much more, let's see if that'll focus. It's a much more cohesive fabric now, yarn. It's still gonna kind of untwist a little bit, but it does hold together. Um, so the, the good thing about plying in the wrong direction is you just redo it and go the way that you're supposed to go. So, I mean, and you still have to set the yarn, so I haven't done that yet. I'm gonna wait until all of it is done. But, so, I think that this was the one where like, halfway through the strand, it, it was spun just in the wrong, in the opposite direction of what it was. So I did this little bit, it was like everything. This is like how not to ply yarn 101. So they, I definitely have a little part over there that's a little bit overspun. But I mean, this is, so this is what my yarn, it's kind of not really focusing. I don't know if that's gonna help, not really. There we go. So you can't really see it too well down here but I'm gonna redo it see it's yeah it's a mess is what this is this is a total mess it's not even together right there I was just trying to figure out what the heck was going on so this this isn't even like a yarn right now this is this is just a mess it is a mess it's gonna be really pretty once I figure it out but this is what a yarn is not supposed to look like. I mean, like you can see, it's just not, basically it is two very overspun singles, completely overspun together. So yeah, so I'm gonna go through this and I'm gonna reply it the other way that I did last night. But you know what, last night was day two of my 100 days of spinning. And this is why we're gonna do 100 days of spinning because I wanna get this all figured out. I've got a lot of really beautiful fiber that I am just itching to put on my, my, my needles, my spindles. Um, and I found the adapter cord for my eel wheel spinner. So I'm gonna get that going. I've got, um, I've got these I've got these that are all ready to ply on my eel wheel. So these are also Blueface Luster singles. 
in blue. So I'm gonna try to figure out my new Lazy Kate this week. So I'm excited about that. And yeah, so that's my spinning is that I, I dug it out again last night, finally, and I applied completely wrong. Yep, this is like how not to ply 101 going on here. So, all right, let's see. Oh my gosh, this is already kind of a long episode again, but we're gonna wrap it up. I just have some acquisitions. Not everybody is into acquisitions, but you might wanna stick around because, all right, I'm gonna start with the most exciting thing, which is the yarn that I got for my Bernie mittens. So, I, all right, excuse the crinkling. There we go. It's a little better. Um, all right. So I'm going to just take my yarn out of the package. All right. So I ordered yarn. Bryce wants some Bernie mittens. And so I ordered ah, yarn that is falling out of my hands. I ordered yarn from Green Mountain Spinnery. This is Mountain Mohair. And I just went and got like a whole bunch of the colors because I didn't know, I kind of want to try to make the different parts of the mittens. Like the thumb section, I'll put a picture up here so you guys can be reminded of what they look like in case you haven't been totally memed out. Um, yeah, so basically like these colors will be for like the front part of the mitten and then like the palm of the mitten, my husband really liked this blue. I, I think that there's gonna be like an internet war or I, I need to start an internet war with like, you, you remember like the, what color is the dress? Is it, what were the colors? Like blue or gold or blue or black or no, I think it was like blue or gold. And there was like this whole huge debate on like what the color of the dress was. <laughs> I don't remember what color it really was, but it's like one of those things where like, the whatever way the picture was taken and in the lighting the dress looked one color to one people and then like other people saw it as a totally different color and there was a big internet argument right so that's kind of how i feel about bernie mittens because in some of the pictures of his mittens the palm looks completely blue and then in the articles that i was reading they were saying that the palm of the mitten is black and I was like, where are you getting that from? I don't understand because in everything that I had seen, the palm of the mitten looked blue. And then I saw a GIF that my husband posted where like Bernie was waving and in the GIF, the palm of the mitten looked black. So then I was completely confused. I'm like, great, I don't know what to do. And so my husband likes the blue. So he wants the palm of his mittens to be blue. So. The palm of the mittens are gonna be blue. And then um, I'm gonna do the color work part of like for the thumb, I'm gonna do in these colors. So I've got, I've got all of these and probably I will have some left over. And so if I have enough left over, I will make him a hat as well. But I'm also supposed to knit Owen some mittens, but I don't know, he's all of a sudden being picky. So I don't know if that's gonna happen. I got in the mail today my earrings and my pen and my little thing that I'm gonna use as a progress keeper. Look at these. Look at how cute these are. Um, I didn't, the earrings, I'm gonna take off the little progress keeper thing and show you that. Um, so I purchased these from a really sweet guy named Leo over at an ocean of clay so it says a o o c and that's his little logo there so and he gave me a pin and i got earrings and then i actually really wanted the earrings but the earrings were all sold out but i was able to purchase them as a set of all three so i did that because i figured well i'll use these um so then there's this little um on a lobster clasp there's a little pair of mittens so I'm probably gonna attach this to a stitch marker 
and use this either as a stitch marker or a progress keeper. But they're so cute. I drop everything at least once on this podcast. So cute. Um, yeah, so, and they're kind of like, they're sparkly a little bit. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, they're sparkly. He's got a whole, if you go to his uh, Instagram, he did a whole little like TikTok video on like the process of him making the, mitt the mittens, which is really cool. So I was excited about those. And so what I want to do is I, he also sent me an extra pin. So I have this cute little box with an extra Bernie mitten pin. And I thought it would be fun to use this as a little giveaway prize. And so what I thought that we should do is I'm gonna start a thread for knitting Bernie mittens. Or if you wanna do like, Caitlin Hunter has a really cute um, pattern based off of her Soldotna crop that she turned into um, a Bernie mitten inspired sweater. Um, which I kind of want to make that for myself too. Um, I would need a little bit more yarn for that though. So we will see. Um, but I'm definitely going to be making the mittens and whenever I make mittens, I feel like I also have to make a matching hat. So I'll, if I'm hoping that I'm going to have enough between all the different colors of yarn to come up with a hat. So I'm going to start a thread in my Ravelry group. And anybody that is knitting anything based on these Bernie mittens, it can be the actual mittens. Um, I have seen socks. I have seen somebody made a cowl. People have made those little Bernie dolls. Anything related to the Bernie Sanders mittens is fair game for the thread. Um, I want to keep politics out of the thread. So I think it should just be like you post your um, finished object in the thread just like a picture and like, hey, this is what I made. You can say what yarn you used or whatever. Um, but maybe not so much discussion in there because it's kind of sensitive topic. Um, so yeah, so I think we'll do like a little like Bernie Mittens knit along. And then after a certain amount of time, a couple months maybe, maybe around when the weather starts to warm up and it's no longer like mitten knitting weather, um, I will just, I will randomly pick somebody who has produced a finished object out of that, out of that thread and I will send you the Bernie mitten. So, yeah. So I think, I think that that'll be fun and that'll be a good way to, to pass the mitten pin along. Okay. So that was not the only yarn that I ordered from Green Mountain Spinnery. It was a separate order though. And this actually, this other thing I had ordered first. So um, I'm not really gonna take this out of the bag and you'll see why. Um, this is also Mountain Mohair, but see, I'm gonna have to do some work with this first. Um, so I, I subscribed to their newsletter and I wanna see, here we go. So they send a sheet along with it. But, so this is, the beautiful coral colorway. And I had exactly, I knew exactly what sweater I wanted to make out of this. My plan with this exact particular yarn is to knit the claret sweater that Thea Coleman just came out. I fell in love with this sweater. I'm gonna post a picture of it here. I fell in love with this the moment it came out and this was the yarn that she used. She used the claret colorway, which I think they are working to restock right now. But, so one day I got the newsletter and they were having a sale on odd weights of their mountain mohair. So this is unwashed. So like, you know, normally you get it like this. It's all pretty, it's washed, it's skeined up and it's, it's like ready to go. Um, but so this is like what they consider imperfect yarn. Like it's either weight like a little heavier or a little bit lighter than what they consider to be sell like worthy to sell like up to their standard so they send a little like note along with your purchase and it says although the yarn may be used before washing 
it is much softer and more pleasant to use after it has been washed. It is important to move the skeins as little as possible when washing and rinsing. Agitation may cause the yarn to mat or felt. So, and then it gives you like, basically like really specific washing instructions. But um, I got like a really great sale on it and they had 10 skeins of this color. And so since I knew I wanted to do the sweater, I needed a color that had enough, that they had enough of some of the colors they only had like one or two skeins and you know I wasn't going to buy it just for like one or two skeins because just trying to shop for my stash but I don't have worsted weight yarn in my stash and I really want to make this sweater and I got a discount on it and so sometimes like it's really worth subscribing to the newsletters a lot of the times I don't even open them they just they come in and they I just I'm trying not to see things and spend money, so I'll just, I won't read, I'll just kind of delete as things come in. But um, every once in a while, you stumble upon like a piece of gold in a newsletter. And this was one of those times. It just, it was the exact yarn that Thea Coleman used in the sweater, just a different color. I think that this is a beautiful color and I'll probably try to knit it up really soon because um, I think it's a beautiful color for going into spring and at least the beginning of spring here is still definitely cold enough to wear a sweater. So yeah, so that's my plan for that yarn. And then I just have one more acquisition. And this one, you guys have to give me some leeway on this one. So let me grab it. Um, because I do have to, all right, I'm going to take it out first so that it doesn't crinkle anymore. Okay, so I'm trying to knit from my stash. And so part of that is that I am looking at, I have all of my stash entered in my Ravelry so that I can, when I'm looking at patterns and trying to figure out what I wanna knit, then like pretty much everything I have, I have, I have put in there. Um, so that way when I see a pattern that I want to knit, I can easily just look and see what yardage I have of everything without having to like tear my space inside out and upside down looking to see what yarn I have and if anything is going to work. This way I've got pictures almost of everything, but I at least have like the yardage and the weight. Um, so I was looking at different patterns to use this beautiful Peary from Brooklyn Tweed fingering weight yarn. I love this color. This color looks so good with my eyes. Just saying. So pretty. I picked up six skeins of this. So I had six skeins already in my stash. So I found a pattern that I want to make and I wrote it down in my show notes, which are across the room. I'll just put a picture of it in here and I will insert the name of the pattern on the screen. Um, so I saw this sweater and I really like it. It's a nice basic sweater, but it has a lot of texture to it. And as much as I love knitting color work after knitting this amazing sweater, I need a little bit of a break from a big color work project. So I've just, I'm kind of looking at patterns that have texture to them and yeah so I found this sweater and it used this yarn but of course I didn't have enough in my stash I had six skeins and I needed between seven and eight so it seems like I need more than seven but maybe not eight complete skeins so then I said okay like where can I can I find this colorway I think I had purchased this at Fiber Space last February when I was in the Baltimore, D.C., no, the Virginia, D.C. area. I was in D.C., but close to Alexandria, like not too far from Alexandria, where Fiber Space is. And so after at the end of that trip, we went to visit Fiber Space, and I found six skeins of this, and I picked it up. And I picked up some spin cycle also because I thought that I maybe wanted to knit, um, what is the name of it? 
can't remember the name of it, but it was an Andrea Mowry sweater that I was kind of like thinking maybe I wanted to knit, but wasn't, wasn't totally positive. So I picked up a couple of spin cycle, but they only had six of this color, which was kind of be kind of, gonna be kind of cutting it close for that pattern too anyway. Um, but I loved the color, so I got it, but that was all I had. So I had to go on a little bit of a hunt to find this color and um, it was actually kind of hard to find. So I was able to get it from Harrisville Mill and because they carry Brooklyn Tweed there because I think that they spin their yarn. And so they had some of the, this is Admiral, the color is called Admiral and yeah, so they had some, and so I snagged two. And I signed up for their newsletter because I was able to then get a 10% discount on my purchase. So I did that. I don't know why I wasn't already signed up, but I did that to save 10%. And then I also had like some rewards on my credit card. So this didn't actually cost me that much. So I just paid for it with rewards mostly. But so now I can actually knit a sweater using mostly stash, but I just have to supplement. So that is everything. That is, that is all of the things that I have to talk with you about today. I did want to say at the top of the episode and I forgot. So, so a little bit of admin here. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that my giveaway for 500 subscribers is still ongoing, but not for much longer. Um, I'm going to give it a few more days. It was supposed to go through January 31st, so I am going to be picking a winner in a few days So, and announcing during episode 13 next week. Um, so if you have not already entered my giveaway and you want to, um, go head on over to episode 10 and find out how to enter. And you have to be subscribed and you have to leave a comment over on episode 10. So go head on over there and check out what that's all about. That's everything I've got for you guys today. I know it was another long one. I swear, the, the less knitting I do, I think the more things that I feel like I have to come up with to talk about. But I'm honestly just excited to get some new things cast on. And yeah, I'm excited to join my own threads in my Ravelry group and knit some of my stash and be spinning. So I've done two days of spinning, three days today because I was fixing plying a little bit. So I'm on day three of my 100 days of spinning journey. So you guys can head over on over to my Ravelry group and join along anytime on those threads. They're not really time sensitive. There will be multiple winners drawn multiple times throughout the year for prizes for both of those threads for participating. So if that interests you, come hang out with us over there. I'm not super good about checking in all the time on Ravelry. I don't go to Ravelry every single day. Um, but I do, like if you send me a message over there or if you participate in the threads, I will see it at some point. You know, it just might take me a few days because it's not the first thing that I think about to go check because I'm used to using Ravelry just to find patterns, not to interact with people. Um, oh my goodness. And I just wanted to say, you guys, thank you so much for um, on Instagram, when you guys saw that I finished my sweater, I felt so supported. It was amazing. You guys were like, yes, you finished it. Good job. And oh, it just, it was so cool to like see that some of you that are watching me here, interacting with me over on Instagram and were cheering me on and rooting for me to finish. So, so that was really cool. So thank you so much. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's all I've got for today. Have an amazing rest of your weekend and have a great week ahead and stay warm. I will be trying my best to stay warm through the frigid, frigid temperatures. All right, 